welcoming you all uh, to today's live session discussing uh, flying fur. Uh, it's a grooming salon on the move, uh, moving uh, I think all across Delhi, Gurugram, and Noida. Jessica uh, and Vaibhav are both uh, co-founders of Flying Furs, and uh, we would like to hear more about you, Jessica, and then to Vaibhav. So um, I am a co-founder of Flying Fur, and um, so we started this four years back, around okay. four years back. You know, considering how tough it is for people to take their pets out. Mm -hmm. You know, considering the weather, the traffic, so many things. We had a dog of our own, and the challenges were faced personally. Okay. So this that's that's what gave birth to this idea of uh, having a doorstep grooming, wherein you don't have to do anything; just give your pet to the uh, grooming van outside, and right. you know, sort it. So. So prior then, to uh, this, uh, what did you do, uh, Jessica? What what line of work were you in, or so did you? I was I was an absolute. Um, offbeat profession i was a graphic designer and an animator before okay. this i uh, uh, so i used to work in animation uh, companies okay then i got bored and then i came oh, in with fantastic all right so all the graphics that we see on the flying for fan uh, vans are yours yeah <laughs> okay all right vibhav uh, let's hear about you uh hi guys uh, so basically uh, like uh, jessica mentioned uh, we guys started this uh, four years ago uh, it was me jessica and uh, one of my cousins uh, uh, we started this uh, uh, just randomly thinking about what are the challenges that uh, uh, people face uh, when they uh, so uh, my cousin actually had a dog and he he was the one who came up with the idea uh, he called me and i am a prof i'm a chartered accountant by profession and uh, for i look at the business side of uh, flying fur uh, he called me to understand whether we can do this or not jessica and i are uh, classmates uh, jessica came in uh, to bring in uh, so we are classmates from school so she came in uh, and looked at uh, she was one person i knew that uh, uh, loved dogs uh, uh, and uh, wanted uh, someone from that aspect to come into the business and understand from that aspect and that is where the three of us uh, started uh, the business um, so we've been fortunate yeah what's his background and what's his name uh, so uh, there's lakshya sahani uh, lakshay. he's my okay. yeah, right. yeah, yeah yeah so yeah, he's yeah. he's he's my brother uh, and uh, okay. so he's a he ha he's the brainchild behind the idea uh, okay. i joined him and uh, jessica uh, so three of us uh, started this and then subsequently uh, in the last one and a half years uh, we've been fortunate to add uh, akshay from uh, petford also as one of the okay. uh, partners uh, in flying fur so for the benefit of our viewers guys uh, this is then uh, i would say look at it as a team of four uh, yeah. lakshay uh, lakshay he does uh, modified vehicles so he makes the vans uh, jessica brands them and colors them and uh, supervises the grooming and wife looks after the business i would say so let's get started straight up and uh, uh, let's hear about uh, the grooming so you said it's been four years since you started running this business, and I understand that you also run a franchisee business for the brand, right? Uh, did the franchisee part was that part of your idea right from the beginning, or uh, did you uh, get on with the franchisee bit much later? Are you uh, able to so, hear? Me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'll I'll just answer that. Uh, so yeah. when we guys started, uh, it was uh, really in terms of. Uh, uh, starting off with something that was more uh, out of passion. Uh, it was not really uh, a business idea to which we wanted to scale to different uh, heights. Uh, it was more a passion project for all of us. Uh, it We realized that there is a great demand uh, and the great need uh, for, for this. Uh, uh, at a point in time, there was there was a there was a time when we had uh, just uh, two trucks uh, we had a waiting period of uh, more than uh, 20 days uh, mm -hmm. for uh, for the grooming sessions and uh, we're getting a lot of flack from uh, from uh, the customers uh, for uh, that kind of wait period uh, mm -hmm. it is only subsequent to that uh, we realized that uh, there is, there lies an opportunity to build a, a franchise model on this uh, we because of the varied backgrounds like uh, you just mentioned in the team of four that we had we were able yeah. to kind of overcome of how uh, from an operation standpoint uh, from the um, need of the uh, of our actual customer which uh, jessica understood and from the business standpoint uh, that is when we subsequently decided 
uh, to start the franchise business. Um, that is also okay. where uh, Akshay from Petfed, who came in, uh, he he helped uh, us uh, in uh, kind of looking at uh, that business and scale that business. All right. Okay. So let's hear about. Uh, let's discuss actual grooming that happens in flying fur, and then we will, uh, you know, go on further. So, um, how does it operate? So, how does one take an appointment? And uh, do do I clearly say that it is a viable business model for people to really take through first, and then we'll go into this? What about? Yeah. Yeah. So Jessica can answer the, the yeah. So now Jessica, can you tell me how do you go about appointments and how do you get to people and so how long does yeah so it's as basic as uh, you know over a call whatsapp all social media handles our team handles and checks them regularly so you okay. can call book an appointment and then we give a slot time slot on which mm -hmm. uh, van reaches your house and mm -hmm. all you have to do is just hand over the pet to our groomers mm -hmm. and uh, the vans are fully equipped with the uh, bathtubs dry dryers tables mm -hmm. all equipments okay so all the grooming is uh, done inside the van okay is that a lot of equipment that you need to pack in a van uh, when you're heading out to grooming what are the basic stuff that you have in your van what have you done to the van unfortunate unfortunately we couldn't see the van today yeah, i really yeah. wanted to do have you guys sitting inside your van but uh, uh to do that as well. <laughs> yeah so let's get about the connecting issue yeah can you tell so, me what um, what do you have in your van Everything that you find in a stationary salon, from a bathtub to a mm -hmm. bath to a table, grooming table, a professional mm -hmm. dryer, which is a full-size dryer mm -hmm. with uh, two forms of trimmers, all of mm -hmm. their extensions, all of the supplementary um, things that you need while grooming. Mm -hmm. Be it, uh, be it all kinds of towels, everything is there in the van. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing that a stationary salon would have, and a van so have. Okay, so you are a fully full service uh, grooming salon on wheels. Correct. Yeah, so including including air conditioning for uh, summers and uh, heated uh, water for the winters. Okay, okay, all right. And uh, you would typically pack your van for the supplies for the day, or uh, does the van have uh, stuff generally stored in the van? So, uh, and uh, uh, do you take appointments during the day for a van, or it's only prior appointment which is fixed upon the previous day? It's only prior appointments because mm -hmm. uh, because of the wait time that Web have just mentioned. Right. So because of that, the appointment has to be taken two to three days in advance. And okay. yes, supplies are restocked every day because oh. we need fresh supplies for every day. So mm -hmm. we restock every day. Okay. And how far does the van drive in a day? Uh, how far away from your your place yes. does the van drive away? Do uh, what so, kind of a radius do you cover? So we basically go zone wise. We do okay. Delhi FDR from uh, uh, Noida has its own van, the franchise. Mm -hmm. Delhi mm -hmm. van covers arms, um, South Delhi, East Delhi, North Delhi, West Delhi, everything. We okay. try to limit the travel as mm -hmm. to zone wise. So that's how we give the appointments according to the zones. So, which means when someone calls you up for an appointment, you zone it and you uh, you know put it in together for each zone, and then so. It need not necessarily be an appointment for the next day, but it would be on a day when that zone gets in for you. Is that how that it works? Is. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. And uh, uh, so uh, I, I think somewhere I read that, you know, it is grooming happening right in front of your eyes. So where, does that mean that uh, the pet owners are allowed to be there by the van or inside the van? Or so we, we suggest them not to enter the van because, you know, the pets get very excited and they end okay. up hurting themselves. But Absolutely there's a window in the van where Sorry, the, the there's a window which okay. is tinted. so basically your dog cannot see you but you can see whatever is happening inside the van. Okay, All that's right. from, you know every pet pet parent's uh, satisfaction because I am being I being a pet parent myself, I mm -hmm. know that I can't leave my babies out to grooming and uh, not see them, okay. which a lot of parlors do unfortunately. Okay. So we have yeah. we have catered to that problem, and there's a window there. Okay, so you're talking about pet parents with separation anxiety. <laughs> no, so I'll tell you, I personally don't trust any groomer. You okay. know, I don't know how would they handle my pet. I am very possessive about all my pets. Okay, so, so I think we will come back to this question of trust uh, on a groomer, uh, which I think is extremely important to trust a groomer, because in my view, if you don't trust a groomer. 
whether you're looking at it or not, you shouldn't be sending your dog to the groomer, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll come back to the question of trust. But um, so, uh, which means, uh, um, you know, when uh, I am bringing my dog to you, do I get to know all the products that you're using in your van for my dogs? Sorry, I no more All the products that I'm using, uh, all the products that you're using in your van, would I get to know every product that you're using on my dog? Yes, of course. So when the appointment is uh, being taken, our executives mm -hmm. make sure that they understand what is the requirement of every dog. Okay. So you know, there's problems like dandruff, there's problems okay. like skin irritation or anything okay. at all. Our executives make sure they talk to the pet parent and understand the requirement. We have okay. anti dandruff shampoos, we have uh, skin sensitive shampoos, whatever okay. that pet requires, we suggest okay. the shampoo accordingly. And that's okay. what it is during the appointment. But uh, is this decided prior to the groomer himself or herself having a look at the dog? This is done so on a call. We try to establish this over a call first so that the groomer knows beforehand what the issue is. But okay. some there is an issue because you know all the pet parents cannot really explain the situation yeah. properly. So that's where the groomer's uh, take comes in. So that's okay. when the groomer goes, sees the coats, and then suggests the shampoo accordingly. As in, when the dog comes to the van, the groomer has a look at uh, the dog and then suggests. Yes. the coat for that okay so what kind of products do you typically use do you have a favorite brand of shampoo that you use or do you use multiple brands or how does it work so uh we have multiple brands right now we have uh, captain zach and we have mm -hmm. wall sorry you have wall wall okay so we cater to uh, so both of them as you know have different types of shampoos right. so we suggest and we also have verbac for medicated okay. uh, needs for any okay. dog so mm -hmm. all three brands, we do a combination of the, the, these three brands okay. and as per the requirement. What uh, are the other brands of shampoos that you have tried out? <laughs> uh, to you be honest, quite, few, a few, uh, yeah, quite a few. Yeah, quite a few. We were okay. regular Forbes, but okay. uh, unfortunately we had a few complaints and had to discuss. Okay. Okay. And so, we guys uh, trust Jessica with her uh, take on this, so she decides. So what yeah, can yeah, we use on the pet, the pet side? On, uh, yeah. you know, what shampoo to work with and stuff like that, because uh, you know you really have a hand feel for it, and then you know, yeah. you know what's working, what's not working, and things like that. I yeah. happen to have yeah. a long conversation with uh, Mohit recently, so we were discussing Captain Zach at length. So I'm in fact waiting to uh, you know get my hands on some of that uh, Captain Zach to try out myself. Um, no. That's the Sorry? You must. It's pretty good. All right. So I shall <laughs> take your word and then try that dog. But um, uh, you you mentioned, you know, dogs might come up with uh, dandruff issues or dogs might come up with what are the other kind of skin conditions that you typically find in a dog? So the most common one, I would say, is that, you know, uh, the hairy breeds. Okay. The parents do not uh, brush them at home. Okay. And they want rumors to act as magicians. Okay. You know, and to just detangle everything and make them like, you know, angels. But which is not possible. And the most hurting part is that the wounds under their mats and their coats, which the mm -hmm. parents don't know about. Okay. So uh we end up in a in a position where uh the coat is really, really bad and we can't put shampoo on it because they're wounds. We can't okay. put shampoo on the wounds. So that's okay. the common problem that I face okay. right now. Um, so, how do you deal with it? so first of all, you're dematting the dog or at least uh, shaving the mats off. Shaving the dog. We end up shaving the dogs. Okay. And then how do you then, if you can't put a shampoo, how do you then bathe the dog or what do you do with that dog? We try to do a dry bath, clean them with damp cloth because we don't want the shampoo will eventually hurt the dog. So we what then, is the dry bath really? Dry bath is also, you know, it's just you spray on the dog and wipe it clean, wipe the coat clean. Mm -hmm. That helps, but not as much as a bath. But mm -hmm. that's what you can do in that situation. Okay. All right. And um, um, okay. So, okay. All right. That's that. And uh, what else do you do? Uh, what are the other products that you use, for example? Uh, so, then shed control to control all the shedding. Then, uh, 
a lot of uh, dogs are also so, could i ask you questions around uh, you know all this dandruff treatment and uh, coat control and things like that or uh, yeah. you know okay so can you tell me a little bit about this dandruff issues people uh, i think a lot of dogs have dandruff which is mm -hmm. nothing but dry hair or uh, dry skin right true, true. how yeah. do you treat that and how do you work around it so um in a groom you have a very little time you know in a grooming session to mm -hmm. basically deal with dandruff it can't be done in one session okay so but we uh, were back sebulitic if you heard about the shampoo yeah. that's what the we use for dandruff yeah that's what we use for dandruff okay and uh, but of course it can't we have to tell the group tell the parent in advance that you know it can't be sorted over one grooming session it has mm -hmm. to be used repeatedly okay just that shampoo we use that shampoo because we don't use any kind of medication or anything because we don't have a vet on board All so right. we don't and what about shedding of hair there's a lot of dogs that shed a lot of hair and people are just a lot of dogs a yeah. lot of yeah what, the what do you do okay yeah so for, so for yeah for that we have wall shed control as of now that's okay. what we and then a good good brush solves the problem for that grooming session and then okay. we suggest them to you know keep on using that shampoo over a month a right. month and a half that's right. when you start seeing results okay so uh, i mean these are one kind of problems that the dog comes with a little bit of a uh, you know skin issue but then you also have parasites infested dogs that come into your grooming vans yes. so how do you deal with those cases so um unfortunately as i said we don't have a vet on board we right. uh, uh, we first of all tell them to consult a vet because that's okay. something that, you know just a grooming session can't solve okay whereas when you talk about ticks mm -hmm. we do tick and free treatments for ticks uh, the tick and free the shampoo that we use is bolfo and so uh, that bolfo what could you spell it for me please E O L F O. Ball oh, ball for okay. Yeah, ball. Okay, so you use that tick and flea shampoo, but then, yeah. you know, when there are infested animals coming into your uh, van, they could be going all over the place, crawling around and things like that. How do you deal with that? So, oh, uh, that's not an issue because our van is completely cleaned and sanitized after every groom. So mm -hmm. the van, the van in itself is not an issue. There's half an hour spent on the van itself for the cleaning. after mm -hmm. every session mm -hmm. so the van is not an issue but then we have to tell the uh, pet parents to you know consult a doctor immediately before the mm -hmm. problem worsens so one okay. thing one thing this one to add uh, that we are uh, quite uh, uh, so we like to be in touch with the pet parents uh, uh, for for the services because uh, grooming is not a one time service uh, you kind of become their uh, uh, it's a lot of repeat clients and you kind of become right. one of the, you part of the pet's life and the pet parents also so we kind of uh, in case in all uh, any cases that we feel that they need to go to a vet uh, we uh, kind of uh, definitely let them know uh, because uh, we guys uh, uh, get to see their pets from up close and anything of that information is uh, uh, kind of rallied on to the pet parent immediately okay Yeah. So, uh, considering that it is so convenient to have you guys over to get the dogs groomed, that I don't have to take my time out to find uh, time to drive the puppy or the dog across your grooming salon and stuff like that. How often do you guys see that you groom dogs more often than uh, a typical, uh, you know, non-mobile, immobile grooming salon? Yeah, so we are called um, for our regulars every week. Okay. Every week, as as quick as that. Okay. Now, uh, you know, how do you? There's a question here. I'm just posting a couple of questions on the screen. Uh, there is Dr. Sneha Thakare asking, how do you treat heavily tick-infested pets? So heavily tick-infested uh, pets. So we uh, basically what we try to do. We also um, stay clear of very strong chemicals mm -hmm. because we have to be very um, we have to be very sure of the products that we use because okay. we. Don't wet on board mm -hmm. any dog can react to any kind of uh, yeah so uh, i mean this is a question that a lot of people discuss and uh, typically that everyone would say is that we don't use any strong chemicals but what chemicals do would you use what is safe for the pets and um, amongst all the products that you have seen 
have you found uh, you know some of the products which you can call uh, really eff effective uh, you know with uh, tick infestation we have actually found bolpo to be quite effective if, mm -hmm. uh, effective um, so what we do is we usually just lay the shampoo lather the shampoo on leave it for 5 mm -hmm. minutes or so mm -hmm. so the uh, basically uh, in layman's language the ticks are unconscious and they uh, you know we brush them with a the tick comb we are able okay. to uh, we are able to take off all the ticks by hand that's what okay. we usually do in our treatment okay and if the infestation is regular because our clients are regular we get to know if the ticks have come back or not then mm -hmm. accordingly we suggest them the further procedure you know if they need medication or anything that they need to go okay. to a doctor all right so and how do you subsequent to that uh, clean up the van for example how do you sanitize a van or what products do you, do you use to kind of clean up the van so we have uh, surface sanitizers in the van at all time that are sprayed all over the van after okay. every service and everything okay. every inch of the van is clean with those sanitizers okay. And what kind of said, products are these and chemicals are these is is it uh, you know what what kind of chemicals would you use for that so we actually don't really uh, fix up to one we have we okay. keep changing them because okay. uh, for the like for for you know uh, we have changed like three three as of now we're trying different products as of now now because okay. you know, sometimes uh, some products do not get affected uh, they don't affect the tick Okay. Uh, is there any particular product that you can recommend for people which they can use to, for example, clean the kennels or clean the crates and so on and so forth? I don't have a name on top of my head to be honest. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, would you use products like Red or Freedom Spray? So, Freedom Freedom Spray, yes. Red, no. Okay. We have had bad experiences with Red in the past because it's too strong okay. for them. But okay. freedom, we do use freedom spray. Okay. Um, uh, we have a question here from Sharad Sharma. Does normal grooming session include cleaning of anal glands? So a lot of grooming uh, salons have started use have do anal cleaning. We don't mm -hmm. because okay. I personally feel that's a doctor's job. I mean, I know I have okay. had a lot of argument about it that you know groomer mm -hmm. can as much as uh, as much as a doctor can do it. But I okay. feel I feel it's only a doctor's job to do the to handle the okay. hands. So we don't. Sorry. What's that? To handle? It's only a doctor's job to handle the anal glands. That's what I personally. Okay. Yeah. Could, could you, uh, uh, I mean, are you in a position to elaborate to the viewers as to what is the importance of anal gland cleaning? I, mean, I think that's something. And what happens if uh, it is not done on time? So anal glands are sacs that are there, uh, uh, which don't. In usual, usual dogs they usually clean up themselves when they poop, but okay. some dogs have this issue where the sacs do not clean up. That causes a lot of pain and irritation to a dog. So which have okay. to be cleaned after you know depends on every dog, which have mm -hmm. to be cleaned after uh, every month or after every two months depending on the dog. Okay. So it's I would like to then add to the viewers that it's not just apart from the pain and irritation. There is also a really terrible stench that comes out. Yeah, so sometimes when you find that you have a really rotten, fishy smell around your dogs, that could very much be the anal gland that yeah, requires yeah. to be cleaned. Right. Yes. So uh, you can either work with your groomer if uh, they do this, or you can go to uh, the vet who can do that. So that's. It's that. just a so, I'm sure any parent would. Spare that much time to go to the doctor and do it safely. Okay. Do you see any risk associated with it? So there's a technique. It's it's all about the technique how to do it. You know, okay. I uh, before flying for like because of, I have three four dogs, I mm -hmm. have uh, you know lack of technique in a lot of places that has end up okay. ended up you know, the blood coming out of my dog's anal area. Oh, okay. It's all about the technique. You should go to a place where you trust, and you okay. know that you're doing a good job. Okay. Um, and uh, there is uh, another question around, uh, you know, cleaning of uh, skin folds and breeds such as pugs, bulldogs, and some mastiffs, Neapolitan mastiff, for example. They all have a lot of loose yeah. skin around. Yeah. So yeah. 
key is to get dry them they need to be dried very very mm -hmm. thoroughly even if okay. there is a little bit of dampness to the skin that can cause infections in them really quickly. Mm -hmm. okay so i feel i feel you know dry them between the folds very very carefully mm -hmm. okay um all right so i um, you know we we kind of covered some of the bits um now uh, with this lockdown I, especially in areas where so are you able to operate during lockdown are you allowed as an essential service so we are not under essential as of now because okay grooming is not but uh, we've been allowed to operate now in mm -hmm. non containment zones okay now for the for the third Third All right. So, uh, once you start operating, would there be some newer procedures in place to kind of protect yourself, your groomers, and the pet parents who come for the services? Uh, you know, how how do you plan to deal with that? So, we have a few guidelines in place. We were already, uh, you know, taking care of a lot of things. We had our groomers always had masks on, always mm -hmm. uh, had gloves, always mm -hmm. sanitized the entire place as well as their hands before mm -hmm. and after every groom. We had all these things in place, but we okay. have to be more stringent about them. And um, as of now, uh, no pet parent will be allowed inside the van. Okay. We're going to be very strict about that because dogs, of course, can't get it, but our groomers also have to be safe. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So there is a question here from Dr. Sneha Thakre. Is it good to spray a dog or a cat with perfumes and deodorants after giving baby? Oh, a bath to them. It's a, it's a very personal choice, to be honest. You know, okay. a lot of companies claim that they're very, very safe, and uh, you know, it's and it, it, in the end of the day, it's a cosmetic thing. What is your choice? What is your personal opinion on this? Not very regularly, and okay. that too, and even if you are using perfumes, they should not be sprayed on your dog directly. Okay. I, you just take a bit, spray it on your hand, and probably okay. just. Where if you if you feel that this area is uh, the neck is stinky, mm -hmm. you just rub it, not spray it directly. Okay, and, and is there a particular product that you would recommend, a perfume or a? a, a, a so we've been yeah. happy with the two products. That's okay. one is Petacom Peta Spray, the glass bottles that you get, and one okay. is the ball deal. These two that we've been happy with as of okay. now. Okay. All right. Okay, so uh, I think a lot of people are waiting to hear from you on if you can guide them on how to manage their pets at home for now when it is locked down what are the basics they need to do at home and i know that you know some of the haircuts can wait and things like that but what are the basics that you can take them through uh, just to keep their dogs in a good condition while uh, the dogs are at home and they are at home so i feel very very important is to brush your dog you know okay. there's a there's a misconception that if i have a short coat Breed, I don't need to brush him, you know. Okay. I'm not gonna get knots, so I don't need to brush him. But there are a lot of lot of other uh, positives of brushing your dog as well. The mm -hmm. oil, the skin relief. Brushing helps, you know, distributing them evenly. Okay. Land in a healthy coat. Okay. So in total, your dog will thank you. For it. Okay. In what case. kind of a brush would you recommend for brushing the dog? So the so I think for short coat uh, the bristle one helps and uh, for long Which coat one? a thicker brush. The bristle brush. Okay, a pin brush. You mean? Brush, yeah, yeah. And okay. the slick brush helps with the long coat dogs. Okay. So that right. you know you can really get through to the skin, including okay. the hair. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and I know because you know when people uh, are dependent on groomers, it's tough mm -hmm. for pets. For for you to groom pets at home, because mm -hmm. you know they're in their own territory, they won't let you do things. Mm -hmm. It'll be very stressful for the pet. So mm -hmm. I would suggest that bring them treats. We bring them a few treats and then help them do it in parts. Don't do okay. it, you know, entirely in one. Don't okay. restrain your dogs. I feel. Okay. Don't the time tie them up on a leash and then start brushing them like it's a punishment. Uh, I think brushing is something that people would have been doing. Uh, we are talking of going beyond brushing every day. Um, so I feel so I would not so um, nail clipping and these things I would not suggest. I am very against you know pet parents doing it themselves. Then okay. I am just talking about the basic bits. Then comes the ears. 
Okay. Get dirty what about dirty. nail clipping if they're using a nail grinder? Grinder is safe. Grinder is safe. But then again, with no experience, people who don't have any experience at mm -hmm. all, I'm talking about people who are absolutely dependent on Quick. Right. You don't know where the Quick is. You know, okay. they would not know. And if they end up trimming that, then mm -hmm. it would be like hell. So okay. that's how I am a little. Uh, I would not suggest people to tackle the nails on their own. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I feel you you must check your uh, dogs regularly for ticks. Okay. But if there's one, it's gonna multiply like crazy. Mm -hmm. So these are some things that you, you can take care of and rest. I'm sure you can uh, you know give them a bath at home for now. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, now, um, we have another question uh, specifically on flying and jumping fleas altogether. How do you get rid of them altogether? Is that a possibility? It's really, really tough. It's one of the toughest problems that we face because fleas are not very easy to um, take out, even mm -hmm. in the cold. So, uh, again, they're tougher than ticks. But yes, we deal with them with the same okay. technique as we do with ticks. We have okay. a tick comb and we okay. get rid of all the ticks and fleas with that comb during the grooming session. Okay. We have a question from uh, Yamika Damani who uh, wants to know who grooms the dogs in the van and are your groomers certified? So we have certified and fully trained groomers. We have okay. uh, one head groomer for each van with mm -hmm. an over 15 years of experience. Okay. Where, where are these groomers uh, trained and certified? So I am the one who trained them right now okay. and okay. With, with their experience, okay. uh, that's basically what helps them. I feel experience is very, very important. But all okay. of them are different, so I can't give you names. Okay. Uh, where been, uh, so, But all of them have been experienced over 15 years. Okay. Okay. So it's primarily uh, banking on their experience and then uh, also you training them with uh, your experience in grooming. That's right. Okay. Uh, we have a, uh, the next next question is on uh, should long coated breeds be brushed when the coats are dry or it should be washed uh, and moistened and then uh, dry, uh, brushed? I feel if the coat is moist, it can land up in a lot of breakage. So okay. I would say if the coat is dry, it's better. Okay. But to get a, get rid of a lot of knots, that little knots that happen through the coat, mm -hmm. you can do it while you're drying them. Mm -hmm. That also helps a lot. Okay. So I have this belief and understanding out of some of my, uh, you know, experience. I have some uh, copper spaniels, which are again long coated dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I kind of find it easier when I have a conditioning spray on the dog when I brush the dogs. That kind of cuts mm -hmm. down on the breakages. What is your view on that? So conditioning spray is still different. I was talking about when they damp after a bath. Okay. Yeah. So that's when the coat can break a lot. Okay. okay. Spray, yes, that can help. That can help. That can help in detangling as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Um. Uh. The, and uh. The, you know, do you brush the teeth of every dog and cat? Uh, do you also groom cats, by the way? Yes. We do. Oh, you do. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, uh, do you uh, clean the teeth of uh, all the dogs and cats? And if yes, yes, how do you do it? And what products do do you recommend? So uh, the toothpaste that we used as of uh, we use as of now is Dento paste. Okay. Um, and we have disposable soft toothbrushes for okay. uh, all the pets which are thrown away after every grooming. Mm -hmm. um, so we do not brush very aged dogs because mm -hmm. you know, teeth condition and gum condition do not allow us to brush them. Mm -hmm. But red mm -hmm. all pets are covered with uh, teeth. Uh, okay. All right. Um, and uh, there's also a question on uh, where are you certified from? What, where did you learn grooming, and uh, you know how did you get to grooming? What, what brought you to grooming? So um, I was, uh, I would use the word crazy, crazy okay. for animals, since I was a child. Okay. So that's how I ended up in uh, in grooming, basically. Okay. Okay. Um, I uh, I would just like like I said, Webhav reached out to me because mm -hmm. uh, he just saw my crazy posts about dogs on okay. Facebook and you know whatnot. 
So yeah. that's how I ended up here because not having a vet degree, I would rather be a doctor. But <laughs> here that's I am. And, um, so that's how flying first started. That's how I got into group. Okay. Um, certified from, uh, I've been certified from a uh, from an online portal called Holly and Hugo. Okay. Yeah. All right. Lovely. So I think we've got a. A little bit of an idea on the grooming side of flying far. Vaibhav, yeah. shall we discuss a little bit on the business side? Vaibhav has been sitting with us very Please. patiently. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you some uh, quick questions around. Um, sure, you know, sure. um, uh, did it, uh, you, from a business perspective, how uh, much of a sense does it make considering the traffic in our cities right now and, you know, considering the fact that uh, you need to spend a lot of time uh sanitizing your van after you are done with the grooming uh so you know how does the num numbers pan out how many groom uh, grooms do you manage to do in a day how, how many dogs are you able to groom in a day uh so when it comes to uh the comparison between uh, uh i mean in terms of the business aspect uh, and the traffic and the situation i feel mm -hmm. that uh, a, a grooming van like ours uh, which is more a doorstep uh, uh service uh, rather mm -hmm. than uh, wanting uh, to go out uh, and visit a complex with a lot of more human interaction is a better option uh, for grooming grooming of pets. Mm -hmm. um, and from that angle, I think uh, a, a post-COVID new normal uh, gives yeah. it gives a, a mobile grooming uh, uh, business a better uh, opportunity. Uh, sure. When it comes to uh, uh, purely numbers, uh, we are able uh, i mean it's a it's a very good business uh, to be uh, running uh, in terms of that's why we started with the franchise opportunity we've been lucky uh, one mm -hmm. of our franchises actually is looking at a second truck also now uh, because mm -hmm. they're not able to fulfill the demand for from one truck uh, mm -hmm. it is it makes sense we can do between uh, uh, four to eight groomings uh, in a day depending mm -hmm. on the kind of services and the size of the breed of the dog uh, on an average uh, uh, i mean is is a decent uh, return from uh, from the business operations and that is why we have uh, scaled from one truck and not putting in any more money the business from the from i mean the, we only put in money for the first truck uh, uh, the other trucks have been built by the money that we've been able to generate Excellent. how from often the, from have the you business. been able to add a new truck to your fleet uh so we start from one uh, it's now at six uh We've uh, we've been slow with this. We've not. Uh, uh, we've tried to understand the market and understand how it is going. Uh, okay. So uh, and this is also uh, slightly seasonal, also in the in the sense that uh, winter months are uh, being in Delhi. Winter months are uh, slightly slow, uh, mm -hmm. and even uh, even when it comes to uh, heavy rains. But isn't uh, but, that the beauty uh, of the truck? You can drive it to a place which doesn't have the rain or the snow. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, in terms of uh, from from the from the manner in which uh, how the business aspect of the advantages of the business have panned out, I think okay. uh, we didn't realize uh, when we started of how big it could be. Uh, so but now there's a definite. Quickly, joke. sorry to cut you off there. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, is there a regulatory requirement in running this van? Is there a business uh, license issue on this? Uh, so not yet. I mean, there are there are the it's still a nascent uh, kind of uh, industry. Uh, so. From a licensing perspective, uh, there is there is not uh, licenses that you require. From a, a mobile, uh, from a business aspect, there are no licenses that you require. Uh, okay. From a from a truck aspect, uh, there are. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, you have to get uh, annual. So it's a commercial vehicle that you take. So there are licenses right. which depend on each state. So these are more state jurisdictions. Are the artists have to, here to understand a grooming truck? Uh, so it is evolving. Uh, there are uh, uh, newer uh, with the food truck business also coming into space and uh, various uh, mobile services that are coming along. Uh, there are uh, uh, there are other uh, uh, there there are changes that are happening in our economy with a lot of new business models that are happening. So mm -hmm. uh, so RTO is uh, completely state wise. Uh, so uh, so the requirements are also state related. All right. Okay. And um, now, uh, if there is somebody who is looking at, uh, you know, investing into a grooming van, and if they would like to be a franchisee of yours, how does yeah. that work? What does it cost to be a franchisee of uh, Flying Fur? Uh, so, uh, we've got a model wherein uh, we have to pay in uh, 12 lakh, uh, fifty thousand rupees for a franchise truck, which includes uh, the truck and the grooming, uh, uh, I mean, the fabrication and the franchise fees that we charge. Uh, okay. So the truck is on. Uh, there's a down payment on the truck. Uh, uh, the return 
that you expect uh, uh, or what our uh, franchises are also getting is about uh, uh, 70 80000 rupees a month uh, in, uh, after deducting the emi so this is free cash flow that you're getting uh, which is about uh, 5% uh, of your uh, 5% return on your investment uh, which i feel is uh, is an excellent uh, opportunity to earn money and especially uh, post, post the covid situation where a lot of businesses would see a lot of change uh, this makes uh, a lot of so, sense uh, yeah, we'll basically start. come back to that so 12 and a half lakhs is what it costs to become a franchisee out of which 10 lakhs is towards the franchisee fee and the fitting fit outs of the truck and two and a half lakhs would be the down payment for the truck am i right yes yes okay so now the truck that, on on its own costs about uh, uh, 12 lakh rupees yeah. uh, so if you if, cost, uh, if a franchisee plans yeah i got it so uh, the total cost including the cost of the truck will be let's say around 24 lakhs uh, or around about between 24 and 25 lakhs but now uh, that lakhs. apart yeah. apart from you providing the truck so let's say for example somebody would like to make it as a pure financial investment which means they are not a groomer themselves uh, they would like to make a financial investment in this uh, as a business opportunity. Uh, what kind of uh, support would you be able to provide? Uh, what about the groomer for the vans? And uh, are you operate able to operate the van with, uh, you know, how many people do you need in the van? And would you support uh, the person with all of those, uh, uh, you know, job profiles, which needs some kind of technical skill set, right? The driver, of course, he can so provide a driver. But right, the rest, right. can you support them with? Yeah. So yeah, so that is precisely why we are offering a franchise, uh, where it it is not only a truck uh, fabrication that uh, that we are offering. We are also offering the uh, means of uh, operating the business, uh, train the train the uh, investor or whoever is the new business owner to understand the uh, nitty gritties of the business, help them understand, uh, 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 give them a quick uh, 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 guidance on uh, how to deal with the. Uh, I mean, pet related issues or the business related issues. And when it no, comes to the groomer, groomer, my question was, my question was, he is coming in as a financial investor and not as a groomer himself. So if I were to invest my money, I'm not going to be grooming the dog myself. I would expect you to run that business and I'd be a business investor, a financial investor. Does that work out that way? So uh, he does not have to be a groomer. He just has okay. to... Uh, operate the business uh, so the operations does not include grooming the dogs yourself uh, mm -hmm. it's from more from a business angle uh, uh, we will provide them uh, with a trained groomer uh, and then subsequent also if there are any further uh, in the during the franchise period any further training requirements uh, that's provided by us uh, uh, we've got a, a, a training module uh, for for these groomers that we provide them with so mm -hmm. uh, it, it's it is basically a business opportunity only uh, it's not necessary that the people who uh, want to start this business have to have uh, uh, have to be groomers themselves uh, they can come in as uh, financial investors and we can help them with the grooming bit okay and uh, do you also have a centralized platform where uh, you can manage appointments or uh, they have to manage their own appointments uh, so currently, what they what we're doing is uh, we are uh, in process of uh, making uh, uh, one of our uh, online platforms, which we'll be offering to the to our franchisees for managing uh, the appointments. Uh, the mm -hmm. currently, what we understand, uh, so they, it is not that it is man, uh, managed at a central place. Uh, they still mm -hmm. have to manage appointments uh, locally, uh, no, but I'm it is through technology. They operate under the same brand name as Flying Fur. How do people reach out to a particular franchisee or a particular van? Do do they come in through a centralized portal where yes. they, you know they come through your website and you can you know uh, allocate it to a certain van? Or these guys have to uh, and uh, you know I would assume that uh, a lot of the reasons why uh, franchisee models work is because there's a brand name involved. There's a certain amount of brand recognition. Hello, sorry guys, I got disconnected. Can you guys hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, sorry, I got disconnected with uh, that. Uh, why about your mic? Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we are audible. Now, um, uh, what uh, I was so saying, I got your question in terms of the franchise and uh, what we are offering in terms of central uh, uh, appointments. Yes, we uh, the appointments currently uh, happen. They come through a central number. Uh, we've got one number uh, through which. Uh, 
all appointments come through or even from the website they come through a funnel which are then distributed towards the franchisees uh mm-hmm. where they can access uh, so we also know how many appointments are coming there and we can market we can help in terms of marketing for so them also so in case of a franchisee opening out in a city that you are not currently uh, in uh, operation uh, what kind of a uh, you know marketing or uh, branding uh, backup or support would you offer them so uh Uh, that is where uh, our partner uh, petford also comes in uh, they we we do a, a launch event in one of these uh, one of these uh, uh, cities petford that is we, we are not in yeah a petford small mm-hmm. petford event uh, for yeah. launch of the truck and uh, we reach out to a lot of people uh, through uh, uh, through their database and kind of help them market uh, through the through the reach that petford has in uh, those cities they have one of the largest databases in the country uh okay. so uh, that that really helps us from a marketing and uh, uh, expansion point of view okay uh yeah. and what is the typical um, you know uh, roi that someone can expect or how soon can they kind of break even in terms of operations uh, or uh, okay we'll come to the operations first and then into the capital investment uh on a day to day basis of monthly running of the uh, van what is the kind of operations that you would need to kind of break even uh, for a month uh so the break even uh, uh, can happen even if you're doing uh, say three groomings uh, or two groomings uh, per day uh, uh, for the for the entire month uh, the cost okay. associated uh, on a variable uh, i mean in terms of the fixed cost for for running a truck uh, they are not very large uh, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, from that angle uh, your break even should happen from the second month onwards Uh, okay. uh from from the launch uh we expect uh, uh, or what we've seen with the three franchises that we operated with uh, that you can uh, basically start uh, making money from the third month onwards uh and therefore we also as so before uh, we go further before we uh, go further i would like to summarize some of the numbers for the viewers uh you know the way i see it is that uh, you have a 12 and a half lakhs of upfront investment at the beginning you have the remaining money payable towards the cost of the truck uh, payable as emis and i suppose that emi is about 20000 bucks a month so yeah. you have a 25 a 20000 bucks emi per month uh, you mentioned about uh, 15 to 20000 bucks of fuel about 50000 uh, uh, yeah. sorry yeah 10 to 15000 yeah uh, in fuel uh, this also includes the fuel for the generator yeah 15000 would include fuel for the generator So you do have a generator in operation. We have a generator in operation. Yes. Okay, and uh, about fifty thousand for um, you know the payroll cost of the operation of the van. Yeah. And so there are three there a, three people involved. Yeah, and is there a franchise fee involved, which is a fixed or a variable in nature? It's a fixed so, franchise. So yeah, we 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 charge a fixed fare, franchise fees, so uh, fifteen thousand rupees per month uh, from the from our franchise owners. Okay, so uh, which is roughly the, about eight percent of the top line, which is roughly about eight percent of the top line. So, which yeah. means you would expect the top line to be somewhere in between a one point five lakhs and two lakhs, two lakhs to two point five lakhs actually. Okay, and um, now what is how much does it cost to groom a dog? So, let me ask about the breed that I understand the best. How much does it cost to groom a cocker spaniel on your truck? So cocker spaniel usually comes in uh, medium size. We do size wise, small, medium, okay. large, or large. So cocker mm-hmm. spaniel we consider a medium. So if you okay. do basic grooming for a cocker spaniel, that would cost you around fourteen hundred rupees per okay. session, which does okay. not include a haircut, which has a bath, dry, ear cleaning, nail clipping, sanitary clipping, teeth cleaning, for massage, okay. and a perfume. Okay. Then, uh, then for, uh, what about if there is a haircut? And uh, w- so yeah. all these services plus a haircut would land mm-hmm. up somewhere around twenty-seven fifty. Twenty-seven fifty. And for a cocker spaniel, would you? How would you do a haircut? You would you use a clipper? Would you strip the dog? Because there are dogs like cocker spaniels which require the hair to be hand stripped. So will yeah. there be any of those done, or uh, you would only use the clipper and the scissor? Uh, we do. We we currently do only clippers and scissors. Only clippers so, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. So um, uh, again, so I'll come back to Vibhav for a couple of more of number discussion. So um, so Vibhav, we are looking at um, a monthly uh, franchise fee of fifteen thousand bucks. What do you offer in return for a monthly franchise fee of fifteen thousand? 
so basically uh, in terms of uh, so one is obviously uh, the the truck and the brand name and everything that you're offering in terms of the, the flying for the truck they paid for separately uh, so yeah, there is a little bit of so the royalty fees is basically for uh, helping them in uh, business operations helping them in marketing uh, and uh, then uh, regularly uh, so it's it's part of the royalty fees that comes in uh, uh, some of it is charged annually some of it is based on business operations uh, mm-hmm. so we helping them with the marketing support and the operation support for uh, running the franchise okay and uh, would you also uh, so when you say operating support what do you offer them with so in terms of uh, a day to day hand holding uh, from uh, from an operation aspect so it's more a partnership uh, uh with the uh, with our uh, franchise owners on on a daily basis if there are any issues that are facing in terms of whether it is truck related uh, or uh, grooming related or uh, anything of that sort uh, there's a there's a continuous uh, uh, partnership so jessica between. from uh, uh, you know i'll come back to you Iber, but jessica there are things like uh, for example how uh, as a continuing professional education for the groomer would there be courses that you would do for the franchisee or in case india keeps seeing uh, you know newer breeds coming to the country i think uh, even uh, pet owners are becoming more knowledgeable and aware of uh, different grooming techniques and different dogs that can be groomed like i just asked you about would you hand strip my cocker spaniel you know so when th- situations like this happen and people are seeing better groomed dogs abroad for so we have a lot of shih tzus in india and you for example kind of see uh, let's say an asian fusion grooming on a shih tzu and people when they ask for it these are all uh, things that are in demand in our market so uh, when you take these into consideration how would you support uh, a franchisee uh, when it comes to you know these different styles of grooming how do you get your groomers up so, to speed you know, grooming is actually evolving rapidly like you said so it has to the learning process has to be continuous so with that in mind we have training modules in place which right. we are updating almost after every 3 months for all our groomers which mm-hmm. we hold um so you know whatever that we have learned with our experience and whatever new there is out there i am mm-hmm. in charge of that i keep holding these training sessions so as to all of them are pretty much updated with all the techniques and everything that is new in the market okay and so do you give them a face to face uh, grooming uh, training session or they get an update online no no it has to be face to face it's basically okay. like a class so this is part of uh, now back to wipe up so these uh, you know continuing professional education or training these guys would be part of the franchise fee that is that absolutely that you make that every quarter or every once in 6 months or once in a year we would offer these classes or in case if there are uh, you know there's a churn in groomers like if there is a groomer quitting the job with one of the franchisees um considering that he is not a groomer franchisee and he is a financial investor how do you have uh, what kind of a process would you have in place to ensure that you don't leave him high and dry so uh, we do no that's yeah. absolutely that's a very valid question uh, uh, we uh, do provide them with continuous support in terms of uh, groomer trainings uh, so it uh, in terms of if there is any groomer that's uh, left and they need subsequent uh, help in any training uh mm-hmm. we do not it is not that there is only a one time uh, grooming session uh, no, grooming would training you that we have no you find them a groomer or they need to find a groomer face so ideally uh, it's more uh, uh, a partnership we do help them in finding a groomer uh, that's what okay. we've done with the three groomers the uh, three franchises that we have currently uh, mm-hmm. in case they have someone on their team and they need any training assistance uh, we do provide them uh, uh, training also uh, at our uh, at our facility and uh, right. it is not it is not a one time uh, service only it even subsequently if there is any need from our uh, from our franchises we continue to do so and in terms of the update uh, we keep them uh, uh, we we strive to a more 6 month kind of an update uh, session from a grooming basis mm-hmm. uh, for all the trainers that they have mm-hmm. okay now uh, uh, one of the questions that i have is where do you find these groomers like for example if i'm a financial investor in a grooming business where do i go looking for a groomer do you have grooming schools in india or do you have people who are training groomers where do you typically find them uh that's a secret sauce so there uh, there are uh, uh, i mean there are so some you can keep uh, the secret uh, secret but are there any grooming schools uh from what i understand is there are uh, uh, there are some uh, grooming schools that are uh, in delhi also uh, that are providing that are doing trainings 
uh, we are do actually in- as a vocation I, i mean people do they sign up saying i want to be a groomer and so let me uh, you know uh, are there schools which run large batches and say that okay we have 50 groomers would, graduating yeah, yeah. not not it's not we're not that fortunate that the supply is that uh, uh, is that high that there are large batches but yes mm-hmm. uh, in terms of and we are actively actually looking at uh, opening a, a grooming uh, uh training uh, uh facility for ourselves uh, in terms of uh, uh doing this as a as, like you said a more of vocational training for a lot of uh, uh, a lot of people that because we feel that there is uh, enough scope uh, in uh, uh, i mean building this as a skill and this as a business also for uh, for a lot of uh, uh, the youth okay. all yeah. right Okay, so um, uh, I I think that would be something very critical because if you don't have a pool yeah, of absolutely. people to push you readily, uh, it might be tough to offer support to the franchisees. And apart from that, there are a lot of products that you know every grooming salon uses. So would you help your franchisees with any of that sourcing their products or? Absolutely, absolutely. So we help them uh, in all sourcing of or whatever products are required. Uh, they they we help them with the complete sourcing of those uh, products. whether it is consumables or whether it is any uh, uh, other products that they require we will provide them okay we have a question from menas khan uh, i would say that either of you could take this question are they certified to give certificate not yet <laughs> but that's uh, it's uh, it's still but, uh, uh, it's you know, i think uh, this is uh, something that uh, i still am not clear about and i'm pretty clear that there is no competent authority in india uh who is certified to certify anybody at this point in time i don't think uh, there is a you know um uh, there is anybody competent in india as a part of a governing body or a regulatory authority on it it is i think uh, people who pick uh, their teachers and their experience based on their own uh, understanding of how good they are and what they can teach them and so on and so forth so i i would say this is uh, you know more or less um you know learn by experience and uh, stay safe and uh, keep uh, make sure that you know how to keep the pets that come to you safe uh, i think the professional groomers in india have started up with something called uh, professional uh, pet professional grooming association of india groomers association of india ppgai and um, you know uh, and i think there is also a point saying only master groomers can do but who are master groomers really so uh, I, i i no i think uh, there are discussions around it i think we will uh, digress from this topic yeah. at this time because there are no you know uh, like i said regulatory authority uh, you know who has uh, set up anything at the moment everybody can set up their own regulations and uh, their own standards and practices and uh, uh, like how sabarish ar is saying it is self regulatory yes currently that is the status of uh this in india but i think there is a good initiative uh, by a lot of groomers in india called the ppgai uh they are trying to bring in uh some amount of uh, you know i would call it just self discipline to kind of uh, teach their groomers and the fellow groomers about teaching and about safe uh grooming and also maybe bring uh, more experienced groomers to teach fellow groomers in india and i think at this point in time uh, a lot of them need to go abroad to study about it learn grooming i would say um, you know things like this can help us uh, probably better the grooming situation in india yeah so sorry i would say it's much needed okay now uh, menas khan is asking what kind of products will you all provide um so i think every all the consumables or any product yeah. that is consumed by van is it can you elaborate yeah. further on it all all consumable products in terms of uh, which are grooming related and operations related will be provided by us consumables and also all the tools all the uh, yes. clippers and trimmers everything and, and uh, in terms of servicing any of these products also would you uh, handle that for them or would you work with someone else to handle so we these? work with partners we work with partners uh, who help in then servicing of these uh, tools tools okay yeah all right um all right uh, i think uh, audience i i think we're good to take a few more questions uh, we can uh, slice and dice the financial bit uh, a lot more but uh, you know 
uh, I think this is a good start for today. Uh, so check out uh, Flying Fog Rumors uh, and their vans. And uh, let's see how nice these vans are done and uh, how they fly around your city. So guys, uh, it will be uh, fantastic to um, kind of have a lot more training and guidance uh, from uh, you guys, uh, especially to all the franchisees and maybe to create a pool of groomers, well-trained, uh, safe groomers uh, where the dogs can have a safe experience coming to you for grooming. Um, anything else anybody would like to add? I'm up to it. Vaiba, would you want to add some more? Anything else that you we missed out? No, I think uh, we're quite good uh, to discuss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in case the there are people who'd be interesting to know more about the franchise business, we're always available to discuss that. All right. So, uh, guys, uh, go ahead and explore the franchise opportunities if you would like to. I think you get a ready van with all the paint in place. So, uh, you can just uh, get in and uh, run out. And uh, Saloni is asking, are there any final tips? Specifically, let's say, uh, considering that, uh, you know, pet parents find it difficult to take their pets to their groomers during the, you know, maybe a month or so. Uh, what what would you tell them that they should be doing at home to make sure that life is easier on the pet and the groomer when they meet each other? Uh, well, I would I would say just keep an eye on your pet. Don't just neglect them when you know you you know you can't go to the groomer. No, no. Apart from keeping just the eye on the pet and the hands on the pet, what I kind of brushes would you the... like? To have? So, <laughs> would you like them to have a few brushes on the pet, and what kind of brushes would you recommend, or anything else that you would recommend? Um, I would say a bristle brush and a tick slicker brush is very important for every pet okay. to have in their pet's closet, if at okay. all they have one. And mm -hmm. a constant check for ticks. That's very, okay. very important. And right. you know, signs out of normal, smells, coats, any discharge, okay. all of that only a pet parent can do, I think. All right. So guys, uh, keep the ears of your pet clean, keep the eyes of your pet clean. And, uh, you know, generally uh, brush your dogs, uh, you know, every alternate day, that's also fine. Uh, maybe you can even make a quick trip to your wet to have these things done. Um, but uh, stay safe and feed your dogs well. That's really important. I think a lot of things are taken care of by good food for your dogs. Um, and, uh, you know, wet visit can always be done because it, it is considered a necessary essential service. So your wet would be able to help you clean your dog's ears and eyes if you find it difficult. Uh, there are some products available. There are ear cleaning wipes and eye cleaning wipes available if you look around. I can't remember the name of that brand. Um, do you know that? Uh, the blue white box. box. Sorry? The blue white box. Yeah, the blue and white box and the pink I mean, and white box. I think uh, Petkin. I think Petkin yeah. or somebody else does. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, those... Um, wipes are available so please use it and uh, we have uh, Yamika mentioning again saying it's shedding season brush daily mm -hmm. yes yeah. uh, I insist on always use it, using a de-shedding tool there's a de-shedding tool by Andis which I, I absolutely am in love with so yeah. guys you can look up that brush uh, there is Petkin eye wipes and Yerk wipes which is absolutely nice so you could get one of those and you could get this and this um their slicker brush is also really good quality so you could get that and the de-shedding tool which you can really really use so i think that kind of keeps your dogs clean uh, and healthy and happy till they get to meet their groomer next so thank you everybody and thank you for joining us on this session thank you dog spot for arranging this for us uh, I think Dogspot's been managing to get a lot of people together to yeah. come up and, uh, you know, uh, at least to do a meet and greet with everybody else around. So that's really, really nice. Thank you, guys, and uh, look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Hope everybody stays safe. Bye.